For more, we have joining us today Professor Kim hyun -Duk from the Korea National Diplomatic Academy. It's good to have you back on the show. Thank you. This time last year, there was no sign that North Korea uh, would be willing to meet with uh, President Moon or President Trump even and start negotiations towards denuclearization. I mean, as a long-term observer of the situation in North Korea, what do you make of the progress that has been made this year? Uh, yes, I think uh, there was uh, a sudden change of North Korean leaders' position. Uh, last year, there were a lot of uh, tension in the Korean Peninsula uh, between Kim Jong Un and Trump. There were, uh, you know, they were criticizing each other, uh, and also the U.S. was thinking about the bloody nose. Uh, uh, strategy, which is uh, the military option for North Korea. Uh, but suddenly, in the New Year's speech by Kim Jong-un this year, he focused on a shifting focus from the uh, nuclear development to economic development of North Korea. And, um, you know, th he also focused on the dialogue. And he said that uh, the North, North Korean uh, delegate will participate in the Winter Olympic Games in, in South Korea. So there was a sudden change of uh, North Korean, uh, you know, strategies vis-à-vis uh, -vis South Korea and, and the United States. Um, so I think uh, this is partly because of sanctions of the United States, also because of uh, President Moon Jae-in's efforts to, to have a detente between two Koreas. But, but I think, uh, you know, there was some inherent uh, desire for Kim Jong-un to have some kinds of... Uh, you know, measures to consolidate his power, which means that, you know, North Korean people is getting more and more complaint about uh, the regime itself because of economic situations. So economic issue is the, the key and focus for his uh, regime stability. I think that's the uh, incentive and momentum that made this kind of huge change this year. So changes took place and the two leaders met in Singapore for that historic occasion and there was a lot of optimism at first that perhaps there could be uh, this road towards uh, peace and, uh, uh, and denuclearization as well. But as we've seen in recent months, the talk talks have stalled. There's been no high level meeting mm. between the two sides and we don't know when this uh, next uh, summit that they've promised is going to happen as well. It seems, though, from reports that we've been hearing, Washington have tried to contact the North about further talks, but it's Pyongyang who have uh, rejected uh, these kind of talks. Why do you think that is? Uh, yes, you're right that uh, some uh, people that have met in uh, Washington, D.C., they say that, okay, uh, you know, North Korea, U.S., definitely they have, uh, you know, different ideas and different attitudes towards each other. Uh, but the biggest problem is that there is no dialogue between two countries. Uh, so. Uh, the U.S. has been contacting North Korea many times for a dialogue, but, uh, you know, there was uh, no, no response from North Korea. Uh, the primary reason is that there have been uh, differences, big differences. I mean, uh, the North Korea says it's now the U.S. turn to lift sanctions. U.S. says, okay, uh, the, the North Korea has done anything about the, uh, you know, uh, substantial denuclearization, so North Korea has to do something. So all these kind of differences is making the talk stalemate. Uh, but um, I think uh, the North Korean Kim Jong Un, uh, I think it, he has some strategies. I think uh, you know he's trying to diversify his diplomatic channels with a lot of countries. He met with uh, Xi Jinping, and also ta also having um, you know contact with Russia, uh, South Korea. So I think he's, by way of all these kinds of diverse diplomatic channels, I think he's trying to slow down denuclearization vis-a-vis -vis some of the incentives like uh, lifting sanctions by the, by the United States. Um, and also maybe he's trying to, you know, kind of postpone his schedule. Uh, I don't know what his aim is. Um, maybe uh, there might be some uh, two objectives, plan A and plan B. Our plan A is that he's trying to internalize all the technologies to develop uh, nuclear weapons and ICBMs and doesn't really uh, think about completely dismantling its program. But if that fails, maybe he will go into the denuclearization. But I think, uh, you know, the first uh, target and objective is uh, just uh, uh, slightly dismantle and give up its nuclear weapons, but still solidly you know, contain full technology of, uh, you know, weapon development, I think. Mm. 
There are small signs that suggest that perhaps uh, Washington is going to take a softer approach towards mm. uh, North Korea in the coming few days as well. Because uh, one report that came out was that U.S. President, Vice President, sorry, Mike Pence, mm. he was supposed to have a uh, uh, have a speech denouncing North Korea's human rights record last week, but it was cancelled. Uh, the official reason given by the uh, vice president's office was that it was because there was a scheduling conflict. But other sources, reports say, uh, it was because of uh, the concerns that it would antagonize Pyongyang, uh, especially at a time when these talks have stalled. I mean, what do you think that says about uh, North, uh, the U.S.'s stance uh, on North Korea's these uh, talks going ahead now? Um, now, uh, President Trump was, uh, is having... Um uh, very hard uh, situation domestically. Um, next year, January 3rd is uh, uh, the day that the Democrats will become the majority in the Congress, and and by 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 that, I think uh, the lot of uh, pressure by Democrats will be made uh, towards President Trump on a lot of issues, especially the general election issues, Russia scandal, all that kind of issues, and also a lot of policy issues. So recently, there have been, uh, you know. Uh, you know, conflicts between Democrats and Republicans about the, uh, you know, President Trump's, uh, you know, establishing war between uh, Mexico and, and the United States. So this is just a beginning. I think there will be a lot of, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, conflicts between two parties. So I think President Trump wants to have some meeting with Kim Jong-un. This will be a very important momentum for his... Uh, you know, his domestic politics. Maybe sometime early next year, by having a summit meeting with Kim Jong-un, this would make him, uh, you know, get spurred by uh, this kind of summit meeting to overcome all the difficulties. So this is a very good opportunity for him. Um, so, he, so you know, you know, Trump government, Trump administration, and all the people are delivering message to North Korea. Mm. Uh, there will be a New Year speech by Kim Jong Un. Uh, Steve Began's, uh, you know, visit to South Korea, and you mentioned that uh, Vice President's uh, speech cancellation. All this kind of is a very positive incentive to North Korea. Okay, we are doing all these good things. Okay, come on out for some meeting and do some kinds of uh, denuclearization measures. Yeah. Uh, U.S. is really serious and sincere this time. Yeah. So this kind of message is, I'm not sure what's going to be the outcome in the speech yeah. of Kim Jong-un, but this is, uh, you know, U.S. is doing as much as it could do, uh, you know, except for, you know, a substantial uh, sanctions lifting. Ah, but without that substantial kind of sanctions lifting, would North Korea come to the table? Because, I mean, um, Trump wants this win. Trump wants to uh, declare that, you know, he's holding another summit with uh, Kim Jong-un and put that uh, to the public. So, uh, I think that's what you're trying to say. But without U.S. making big concessions, hmm. will uh, Kim Jong-un want to meet with Trump again? Um, I think Kim Jong-un's message was very uh, continuous, the same messages. Uh, First, it's now U.S. turn to do something. So, U.S., you have to lift the sanctions. That has been the one message this year. And second message is that, uh, okay, to the South Korean government, uh, South Korea has to uh, kind of decouple its relationship with the United States and focus on the North-South Korea's detente. Uh, so, even though there are some pressures by the United States about South Korea to... Uh, you know, keep on the United Nations sanctions, uh, don't cross the red line when it comes up with the cooperation, economic cooperation with North Korea. Uh, don't do that. North Korea is uh, clearly uh, delivering message to South Korea. Okay, just ignore all the things and focus on the debt hunt. Uh, so all this kind of message has been the one that has been delivered by North Korea. So I don't think there will be very different messages contained in the New Year's speech. I don't think... Uh, uh, North Korea will be, okay, uh, thank you for all that kind of <laughs> pos positive incentives, Mr. Trump. I will go and uh, denuclearize just North Korea. Let's have a summit meeting. Let's have some cons outcome in the summit meeting. I don't think that kind of message will be in the speech. Mm. But then looking ahead next year, I mean, what can we expect then? If uh, We'll have to obviously watch what comes out of Kim Jong-un's uh, speech, but uh, mm. what kind of progress can we look ahead to next year? What uh, realistically, where would we go next? Um, 
Recently, there have been some messages by North Korean agencies. Uh, the first one, the media agency located in Japan, so called Joseon Sinbo, uh, it mentioned that the, as there have been some resolve by Kim Jong un to denuclearize itself, uh, there will be no uh, risky situations next year, which means that uh, North, South, North Korea and the U.S. Uh, negotiation frame will be. Uh, will, be con will, will be continuous next year, and also North Korea, South Korea, the tank will, will continue in, the, in, in next year. So even though there will be some struggles between, you know, players, um, you know, I don't think North Korea will come up and do some test of nuclear weapons and missiles, which will, you know, totally uh, make all the frames risky. So the, the frame, same frame next year, I think. And the other media, the Joseon Chungang uh, Tongshi, which is central news agency of uh, North Korea, it also uh, says that uh, it's all about the United States. It's now U.S. turn to lift the sanctions, not North Korea. So I think the same pattern of uh, treating the United States, uh, you know, asking and demanding the United States to lift the sanctions will continue next year. Mm. And then also this year, there was also supposed to be an uh, inter-Korean uh, meeting uh, in Seoul as well. Kim Jong-un was set to come to uh, Seoul before the end of the year. That didn't work out in the end. Uh, this is all seems to be tied up as well with the U.S. summit as well. I mean, do you think uh, Kim Jong-un can come to Seoul next year? Or will that have to depend on what happens with the U.S., do you think? Um, I think, uh, you know, it all depends upon what kinds of new diplomatic strategy it comes up in the New Year speech. I don't think there will be so much new things. But the focus, I think, will be on economic issues. This year, economic situations got much worse than last year. I mean, the North, the North Korea-China trade relationship uh, has decreased for about 90 percent. So 90 percent has decreased. Only 10 percent are the trade between North Korea and the China this year. So I think uh, Ch Kim Jong-un has to do something about its own economic issues. I mean, now the North Korea is focusing on, uh, you know, its own, you know, economic, uh, you know, endeavors to, to, to come up with economic development domestically. But I don't think that will be enough. Uh, would uh, North Korea just stick to that kind of economic strategy or come up with some other ways? I think that's the focus that we have to take a look into. Mm. We're out of time, unfortunately, so that's where I have to wrap things up. Thank you for coming in today, as always. Thank you very much.